what's up guys welcome back to the Simmons Garage podcast it's your boy Stevie G coming at you with episode or day four of the daily podcast challenge that I've got going on basically to get us going um, like I said before listen to all of them and see what you think if you like the shorter but more information packed podcast versus the long form that we used to do let me know because I really want to give you guys whatever you guys are looking for that you want to, that you want to uh, listen to and you know just enjoy you know how, whatever you're doing with this information and this uh, and this content so this episode is going to be a um, it's going to be like a rant but it's not really a rant but it's uh, just my idea of diagnosing versus guessing okay in the mechanic field and the technician field You've got, you've got uh, guys who are known for diagnosing, and they know how to diagnose. They get the car fixed majority of the time. We're not perfect now, but majority of the time, 99% of the time, we fix it right the first time because we are sure that that's what's wrong with it before we send the repair order out to the customer. Okay. Um, then you've got the other other side of the shop, the other guys that guess. Okay, now you can go on a long stretch of guessing and be, being right, and it saves you time. Right, you didn't spend your whole hour of diag, and um, you got the car diagnosed. Part comes in, you put it on, it fixes it. Woohoo! You know what I mean? You you guessed and you made it. But at the end of the day. The time that you save on guessing on those ones that you got right, you're going to lose on the ones you got wrong because you're going to get a bunch of comebacks and you're going to have to look at that car for free the second time and so you end up losing out anyway. But before I get into all of that, I want to um, I want to say a little thing, a little disclaimer. Um, for any of you out there who aren't technicians or mechanics, and uh, you're listening to this for other reasons, you know, just for entertainment reasons, or you know, you're into cars or whatever, but you don't work on them daily. Um, there's this common thing um, with uh, regular people who aren't mechanics that they think that diagnosing means that you just hook, you just hook the. I hear this all the time. These exact words: you just hook the car to the computer, and the computer tells you what's wrong with the car. I'm sorry if I have a little snappiness in my tone, but it's because people downplay guys like me that put in a whole lot of work to know how to diagnose a vehicle. Um, it's not as simple as that. The, the DTC, the Diagnostic Trouble Code, can lead you down the path of diagnosis, yes. It doesn't tell you what's exactly wrong. That code means nothing at the end of the day. I would give an example, but you may not know what I'm talking about. But anyway, just because a code says there's something wrong with this particular system doesn't mean that that particular system is the problem. It can actually be something else causing it to malfunction, if that makes sense. So just to clear that up real quick, like I said, it's not just hooking up to a computer because if that was the case, you could take it to AutoZone, O'Reilly's, whoever has got a scanner, they'll scan it for you. and then you just order the part, right? You would just order the part. Why would you bring it to us to diagnose and actually figure out what's wrong with the car? And um, a lot of times we'll get cars from other shops that they'll give to me to diagnose because these guys have swung three and four times at the car and cannot get it fixed because they're going off of just what the DTC says and not actually diagnosing the vehicle. So I'm going way off on a tangent here, but I just wanted to get that explained. Um, because I feel like people downplay diagnostic techs and I feel like diagnostic techs are very important so anyway let's get into this um, so I've got a couple bullet points here just to keep me on track um, this one might be a little bit lengthy it's not gonna be 30 minutes or anything like that but it's gonna be a little lengthy um, let's just start let's just start at square one okay there's a difference between guessing and diagnosing let me explain the two. Diagnosing means that I've looked at the, I've, I've brought the vehicle in, I've looked at it, pulled the codes, what have you. you may not have codes. A lot of cars don't have codes, um, and they have a malfunction. Um, 
I narrow it down to the exact part that the car needs and I know at least 90% but usually more, usually 100% that that's what's wrong with the car. That part, if I change that part out right now, it's going to fix the issue and the concern will be gone. Okay, So starting there, that's what diagnosing is. Actually figuring out what's wrong with the car. Have you ever been to the doctor and they give you some medicine for something that you have and it didn't fix it? It's the same thing. Okay, he's guessing, and it's a little bit it's a little bit tricky with doctors, right? Because they can't just hook up to you and read all your data. I mean, they can, but it costs a lot of money to do those tests, and it takes a lot of time. Whereas I can I can look at that data pretty quickly. But what I'm trying to say is, you know, you got to know, you got to know before you fix it. So, so you've got that, and then guessing. Obviously, you can guess what that is. No pun intended you uh but it, it's more they call it they try to call it an educated guess or it make it makes sense um a lot of techs get by with it but but not all the time they end up covering it up we'll get get to that in a minute but they will go with the best thing oh i've seen this before it's this oh i've seen this no start before it's a crankshaft position sensor they put the crankshaft position sensor in and then fix it or it's got a code for a crankshaft position sensor. They throw a crankshaft, crankshaft position sensor in it. And it's actually the harness going to it. So this is the type of deals I'm talking about. Um, <clears throat> when you guess, you're just leaving too much room for error. Yeah, you could be right. But you also could be way wrong. Way wrong. So there's a big difference between the two. And... Um, Usually shops know the difference and they'll they'll value somebody who gets it right the first time because it's very important in a dealership to get the car fixed right the first time and get it back to the cover customer delivered like it's supposed to be that way you know what I mean the customer is happy so like I was saying before you need to be completely convinced that that's the repair if you haven't done enough uh, diagnosing you haven't went far enough into the diagnostic process to be convinced then it sounds like you need to do some more diagnosing sounds like you need to dig a little bit deeper into the concern and figure out what it actually is if you're not convinced like if you have to say if you say this if you say I think that this is what's wrong with it you haven't done enough diagnosing you need to dig deeper into that situation um, I hear it all the time and it's okay but if you have, if you say I think this is what's wrong with it, then you need to do some more diagnosing. Okay, so one thing I want to bring up is that some to and I'm not throwing this is not a tech bash. It may sound like it, but I'm just trying to get across the point that you don't want to be that guy. You don't want to be the guesser, man. You do not want to be that guy. Yeah, you might look you might look uh, quick and smart in the law in the in the short short term. For a little while, the service riders might make you a hero for a little while, but once once those misdiagnoses start coming in and you start getting those comebacks because the car comes back in a week, a month, or a day, um, <clears throat> and they start racking up, the service riders are really not going to like you. Okay, They're not going to want to deal with you. So short term, you may look like a hero. You may look like a badass. But long term, uh cat's going to be out of the bag. They're going to know what's going on. So, not trying to bash other technicians. I'm just trying to tr just trying to state and show examples of what you don't want to do. Okay. Um, so what I'm gonna say here is some techs cover up their missed diags with other repairs. And let me explain. <clears throat> what happens is, let's use that crankshaft position sensor as a uh, as the problem. Set the code for that. He throws a crankshaft position, position sensor in it. Doesn't fix the issue. Finds out it needs uh, the the harness is harness is uh, cut. It's open, right? Something hit the stick or what have you. What happens is he fixes the harness, right? But what he does is he tells the customer that it also needed the harness fixed, right? Um, <clears throat> you don't usually see this in dealerships. But I'm just saying I know I know that this is how they think, this is what they do to cover their butt. Instead of telling the customer 
my bad. <clears throat> Let me fix this up for you. They'll say, oh no, it also needed this. When I was in there, I found this, but I didn't want to fix it. I wanted to see if it would work. So they do that kind of stuff. They'll cover up their misdiag with another repair. Um, and they'll, they'll blame it on that it had two problems. When really it only had one. We both know what it was, right? So, <clears throat> the other, you know, the other thing is diagnosing it down to pinpoint the problem. I already said that. Um, <clears throat> use your resources, okay? Use your resources. Um, as a technician, as a mechanic, whatever you like to say. I like to say both because people get tripped up about that word. I've got a podcast episode on that if you want to check that out and what I think about that. Um, use your resources. Not only does the service manual, nine times out of ten, let's say it's a DTC, nine times out of ten, you can follow a step-by-step -step procedure. Yes, it might take you through the woods. It might take you the long way to the diagnostic. That's where you getting better at it comes in handy and you get quicker at diagnosing. Um, that's where you start making money because you start getting quicker at diagnosing. Okay, um, <clears throat> But use your resources. Service manual... Can follow, you can follow it and it can bring you down to the point of failure and you can fix it that way. Or you can just use it as a backup, follow the little steps that you've already done just to make sure that your diagnosis is correct. Um, you have other resources. You have stuff like Identifix. You have stuff like um, if you're in a dealership, nine times out of ten, you have um, <clears throat> some kind of support group. Nissan calls it TechLine where you can look at previous cases of similar issues on the similar making model of yours and see what they did in that situation and then you have other technicians that you can talk to now you can't just trust any old technician you talk to you know take it with a grain of salt if you're asking somebody who doesn't know as much as you you might be doing yourself a disservice um, and what if you end up asking the guesser then that's even worse right so don't ask the guesser but uh, figure out who those guys are and try to weave them out but um but uh use your resources man and um let's see here like i said guess it's coming up with what makes sense right you're like oh this makes sense i think this is what's wrong with it let's just shoot and go for that now there is a time and place for that but it is not in a professional environment at a dealership these people need an answer and they need it now and they need the right answer they don't need to be messing around with you for three or four weeks on trying to figure out what's wrong with the car. They need it done. They need it done now. Okay. <clears throat> what I was going to say, though, the last thing, just, just, to, just to finish it all off, this will fix all the other problems. Okay. This fixes all the other problems. Um, and then I'll go back to resources because I missed a few things. It takes understanding the system in order to make a proper diagnosis. <clears throat> and I mean understanding the system completely. This rolls over into being a technician in general. I feel like a lot of guys jump into it because they love working on cars. They love turning wrenches, whatever it is. They love taking things apart, putting them back together. Maybe they don't even like cars. But they like to do things like that. And they'll get in there and they'll get to work and stuff. And they get so used to flagging a lot of hours and making money that their, diagnos their diagnostic skills wane and are not on par to their R and R skills, their you know repair, repair, remove and replace um, skills, because they don't slow down for a little bit to understand the system. And you can do this on your time off. This is another tangent, but you can do this on your time off. You ain't gonna do it at work, but understanding the system. Because if you understand the system, any particular system, then you know what happens when one of these things is missing how the whole system acts or when this unit's not talking to you, this unit or you, you'll get used to seeing this problem. If you understand the system, when you see the concern, you have a pretty good idea of where to start because you understand the system, okay? So keep that in mind and uh, keep that in mind. So what I was going to say about resources other than that, other than your like outside resources, keep in mind, if you're a mechanic technician, you're going to know what I'm talking about. Anybody else may not. Oscilloscope. That's how you can use that to, to read waveforms. Um, <clears throat> anything electrical, you can use an oscilloscope on to look at the waveform. I can tell you the, uh, 
I can tell you which cylinder in an engine compression is low, compression is high, just by using an oscilloscope. I can do a lot of diagnosing with an oscilloscope. Um, <clears throat> a voltmeter can get you there too. If you're dealing with electrical, you need a voltmeter or a power probe at the very least. A power probe is a quick way to do it, but it's not the most precise when it comes to resistance. But I'll save that for another podcast. Um, <clears throat> but use your resources, man, and <clears throat> buy your kits, your pressure testing kits and everything else that you need as you're buying your tools to help you diagnose. Because it's, because if you can't diagnose a car, you can't fix a car. And if you can't fix a car, you can't make money. And if you can't fix a car and you can't make money, you're not a technician, you're not a mechanic, man. You're just a dude with tools. So, <clears throat> this is why I don't understand how they skip that step. I don't understand how there's guys out there that just do an R and R. I don't understand it. Because at first you gotta understand the system and you gotta know how to diagnose the dang thing. If you, you can't diagnose it, you can't fix the car. Plain and simple. Plain and simple. I'd get that put on a shirt. If you can't diagnose it, you can't fix it. Um, so anyway, rant. You know that's that's the end of the rant. That's about all I'm gonna say about that. But just work on being a diagnostic tech man. Don't be a guesser. And if you got any questions about how to be a better diagnostic tech. Or what, or what path you should go down, please, please contact me. I'll help anybody. That's what this podcast is about. Very passionate about this, man. That's what this podcast is about. It's about lifting technicians up and proving other technicians. People who are interested in the field, come on, man. Come on. You can get it. You can figure it out. You can do it. It can be done, okay? If you want it bad enough, it can be done. And cars are fun to work on, man. They're a whole hell of a lot of fun to work on. They can make you struggle at times. You can get frustrated with them, but that's with anything, man. That's with anything you want to learn, you can get frustrated at. But anyway, <clears throat> that's what this channel's for, man. It's to uplift technicians and mechanics and people who are interested in cars. You don't even have to call yourself a tech or a mechanic. If you're interested in cars, this is the place you need to be <clears throat> because I'm going to bring everything that I can bring to the table. That's where I'm at right now. Anyway... If you're not a mechanic or technician, share this podcast with somebody that you think is interested or would be interested or are already a mechanic or technician because this could help them. I'm bringing tips. I'm bringing, I'm bringing all kinds of things for that field or just for people that like cars in general, like I'm saying. I keep repeating myself, but I just want to get the point clear. So share this. If you're watching this on YouTube, subscribe to the channel so that you can get updates on everything that's going on. Like I said, it's a daily podcast now. It's not weekly. I'm making up for the <clears throat> for the hiatus I, I went on. And uh, if you're if you're on Spotify or any of the other platforms, make sure you follow us to get the updates. Um, check us out on Instagram. I, I'm the real Stevie on Instagram and the Seamless Garage. We've also got it on Facebook. And uh, hit us up. But uh, yeah, I'd like to get a conversation going about this and see what y'all think. If y'all seen some guessers out there. But at the end of the day, don't be the guesser. We'll see you on the next one. Later.